we're back. Hello, hi, welcome back, everybody. Yo, yo. Hello. Welcome back to another episode of the Ashy Knuckles podcast. Um, What's Mosey up, Anime World? That's B Woods. Yes, sir. Marky G. And Johnny Dubs, What's right up? next to me. We got mysterious Johnny right now, man. What? A, what your, what's your video, my G? A mystery. You got an unlocked character right now. <laughs> I'm gonna put the I'm gonna put the cheat code to get the uh, to get the to get John's um, video on. I'm gonna put the cheat code in real quick. Hold on. A B A C A B B. Enter. All right, besides that, we had uh, UFC in Florida <laughs> for the third year in a row, another pay-per-view, and unfortunately, it wasn't in the Duval this year. Nah, farther south. Yeah. 305, baby. And apparently, it's Shout out to things. Shout out to Gilbert Burns for putting on a um, very, very dominant performance. It would have been more dominant if he didn't if Jorge didn't wear so much lotion. We'll get to that. John. Well, you know, <laughs> man, Jorge has a reputation to uphold, bro. You can't be, you know, street Jesus if you're ashy. John. <laughs> Tell the viewers and the listeners how well that this UFC did down in the three oh five. So uh, I don't know if you guys know this, but the MSG uh, for the first fight did record numbers. It wait, was like wait, wait, 12... wait. What was the first fight? Sorry to cut you off. The, the first fight was uh, Alex Pereira versus uh, Izzy, the, the, their, their first bout at MSG. Madison Square Garden, you know, the premier stage. And they did like 12 million point something. Uh, massive gate. One of the all-time biggest gates for the UFC. The one in Miami did, like, smash that record. I think it did almost a half a million more. Um, so Dana has confirmed that they're coming to Miami, like, once a year at least, and then Jacksonville every now and then, at least once a year too. So if you're living in Florida, it's great news. Um, so, yeah. So that's actually surprising. I thought they would hit up Tampa before they hit up Florida. I mean Duval, sorry. Well, uh, Dana said in the press conference because of what um, our mayor did by letting them during COVID, because it is Abu Dhabi and Jacksonville were the only places they could really put stuff on. Um, so he like he feels you know Dana is all about loyalty, at least to people that you know. When it, when I'm all for it. When it's when it benefits him, he's all about it for sure. Which is great business. Well, um, I mean, that's, that's good business. That's, that's just good business. I, I will say this though. Um, let's give a quick shout out to our governor, Ron DeSantis, for keeping fight sports open during the um, the whole COVID games, and we were able to get fight card here. And now I guess like we can get some more. Aren't we having an event in Jacksonville uh, coming up? Indeed. I believe yeah. there's one in June. June? Mm-hmm. Yeah, June. So, so, right in the thicker summer, baby. Let's go. Think about it. Where else would you rather be during the summertime? You got sandy beaches. You got bike car going on in Florida. I mean, come on, man. Get you a little taste. That card, you, you asked the question, Mosey, about the card overall, right? No, I know it did really well, according to John, what, what he told me earlier today. Yeah, it, 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 it did. Like, Dana was blown away at how many buys they got and how big the gate was. Um, and, I mean, he was raving about how, like, when they did their last UFC event in Miami 20 years ago, the place was a dump. And... Uh, now it, 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 he, he like everyone has been raving about it. He's like, this is like this runs with L.A. 15 years ago, because um, L.A. is a dump now. So 
he's very stoked on Miami and Florida. So, and the, it was a huge, huge fight, which he was asked about a trilogy. And Dana wouldn't rule it out, uh, especially with how big it was. But he said, you got to ask Alex because he thinks he's going to move up. Izzy was asked about it as well. And he's like, well, I got an immediate rematch because I was a dominant champion. So he has to fight contenders. But I don't think he's going to. I think he's going up to 205. You'd have to talk to, to Alex. And I'm, you not, know, he's been- I'm, not, I'm not a real big fan of automatic rematches um, un- unless it's a long reigning champion that loses their belt. Right. It's the only time I think it's a it's even or unless it's a really, really competitive close fight. Um, like the boys at lightweight had with um Figgy and um Brandon Moreno. If it's something like that, then yeah, I'm cool with seeing that again. Or like but, uh the Holloway Holloway Volk. Yeah. Yeah, that was another situation where Holloway was a long reigning champ. At featherweight, so, so if you have if you have if you get more than if you get more than three title defenses, I think you should deserve an automatic rematch. And you know, so you retire. Here's what I I was spitballing with someone that Alex does move up to two hundred five, and if he does become champ at two hundred five, Izzy might try to go up again, rematch. So we will get the trilogy. It'll just be at two hundred five. Uh, and that that could be very compelling. And from a pay per view, like I know Dana would do that in a heartbeat because just how much money they made off this. What you trying to say, Mo? You got there, Mo. This is my card. That's me raising my hand now. I thought it was a microchip. Um, microchip. Okay, Holloway had to fight a couple contenders before he got back to Volk. He did get an instant rematch, but currently. I can think off the top of my head when the 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 winner, the contender that defeated the long reign champion, got an instant rematch after they lost to the former champion while they were champion in immediate rematches. I can think of two off the top of my head right now, and it's uh, Cody Garbage and you like how I did that Garbage and uh, yes disrespect. Miss uh, Pena, I'm drawing a blank on her first name. Juliana. Yeah. I can well, think of two so, off the top of my head. So, what's, I mean, if it is up to Alex to fight Izzy again, I would do it. This man is so up two wins, well, right? Two wins? I think yeah. he should, uh, like, if I was him personally, I would, I would weigh everything. Because, you know... The, like right now, the storyline of the fight, of him going back, him going up to two hundred five to fight the guy that beat his mentor for the championship, to like you know it's it's like a Rocky story, right? So that's a very compelling. So you could do that, or he could stay at one eighty five and you know fight a couple contenders, uh, and then go back to Izzy. Um, I mean the. That's a shallow story, though, because they haven't been training together that long. Right, but that's that's the perception, and that's the angle of the of why they're fighting, right? Um, like, Gon and Jones, there's like no real reason for it. All the whole thing of that was John Jones returning. You know what I mean? But we like Wait. a big part of fight Wait, promotion is, it- is the storytelling, right? Or the like, why are these guys fighting? And I think Not it's just a good angle. I mean, it's 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 a it's a small element, but uh, at the at the end of it, it's fighting. And yeah. at that time, Jones was you know Jones is considered one of the best ever. Everybody was right. like, anticipating his. Hold on, give me a second. They were all trying to anticipate his return, and then Don was what number one. Isn't he like number one in the world? So you say that, but he's the only heavyweight that's never had a wrestling match. Or a Brazilian Jiu Jitsu match. It was, it was such a sloppy um, matchup, right? I mean, he's a, it's mixed martial arts, though. It's not wrestling or Jiu Jitsu. Right. It's mixed, mixed martial arts. I mean, you say that, but there, there, like, there was no real story there other than the Jones 
like the whole question of that. Like there's no, I mean, no there's, story, like, story. I mean, storylines add add some element to the. I mean, add some intrigue to the fight, but a storyline isn't necessary for. A well, fight. like for for fight promotion, like I've been get, getting into that, like what it means to be a promoter. It's like the five W's of who, why, where, when, um, and what what's the you know. So I mean, that's like kind of important. Uh, especially when you're trying to get people to buy it. I mean, you're going to, like, us hardcores, we love fights, just for the fight, but, like, you know, the casual guy, oh, he's interested in this fight, or it's, like, he sees, like, the build-up, the promotional, and he's like, oh, I want to see... It. It's like, that's where you have going on for Alex right now. I, I'd be curious to see what he does. Um, people keep saying that the weight cut is, is so awful, but I've never heard from him or his camp how bad it is for him. Like, that is, like, a struggle where you see other people struggle and complain about it. But, honestly, if, if he didn't dehydrate himself like that, I don't think that blow would have KO'd him like that. Um, he have, th there's some good research out there. I, because I, w I went down a rabbit hole after Colby said that the reason he fights at his natural weight class is because when you dehydrate, you don't have enough fluid in your brain uh, to protect it. And I went, there's like scientific uh, evidence backing that up. So I think the guys that do severe weight cuts are very um, susceptible to getting knocked out more easy than others. So yeah, I mean, there's, a, there's a there's a there's a benefit to being a bigger guy um, on fight day, and there's a, obviously on the opposite end of that, you, you get you you got to give up something. You got to give up something to be the bigger guy. So it's it's always that's always been the case. That's never um, that's so like, not um, that's just, that's a standard in fighting in general. I mean, like weight, weight cuts happen in all fight sports, um, including boxing. But the reason why most boxers don't cut a ton of weight. It's for that reason exactly. You're getting, you're getting, you're gonna absorb more headshots in pure boxing than you will in MMA just by the nature of the sport. So um, that's that's why there's a smaller um, amount of huge weight cuts in boxing, but you do see it quite often in, in MMA. You see a lot of guys who have, um, you know, twenty pound plus weight cuts, and um, they get to they get to implement that that strategy and be the bigger, stronger guy in the grappling department and, and I'm, well, in all facets of fighting, that's why they have weight divisions. The size does matter. So they have, um, they get an advantage, but obviously the disadvantage of that is, you know, if you do get cracked, um, you know, you might, you, it's, you're like, you're likely, you're more likely to get knocked out. So it's a give and trade thing. And, and I'm, I'm not completely sold on being, being bigger, being a benefit. Just because when we look at Covington, you know, he's not a bigger guy, but he does dominate with his wrestling. Yeah, but he's not champion. Um, so it's like, yeah, I mean, he might... You can say that he's not champion, but... He can beat some older men. He can beat an old washed Woodley. He can beat a washed... Um, what's, uh, what's his face? Uh, oh, what? what? The, light, the, the, light, the lightweight champion. Um, for, he's a lightweight champion for a long time. Uh, Dos Anjos. He can beat guys like that. Uh, old Robbie. What, what, what were they? You can you can you can, you can, you can, you can out you can you can outrank an older. I mean, outpace and out cardio an older you know um, fighter toward the end of their career. When you get to the top crop, to the you get to the the cream of the crop, and you're fighting actual contenders, size is going to matter a lot, man. Like that. There's a reason why we, there, there's weight divisions. I mean, if there was if there were no significant edge in that then they wouldn't have weight classes at all. It would just be, you know, the fighters would just fight whoever was on the ticket. I'm not saying that uh, size does not matter, but the... It, it's significant. The, 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 the weight bullying and, and the cutting with the downsides of it versus the benefits of being the slightly bigger guy. Unless you're a pure grappler wrestler, it doesn't seem to help. But then you have guys like Sugar Sean who cut... A significant amount of weight, and he's not known for his wrestling or grappling. Yeah, uh, I'll give you another example too. Uh, Anthony Rumble Johnson wasn't um, known for his grappling either. He was a knockout artist. He cut significant amounts of weight to fight at 170 pounds. He ended his career fighting at heavyweight. So it, it just it goes to show you that like it does add an edge. If you're a bigger guy, you're going to create more power. His career, 
took you're off generate, and was better when he went up. You're gonna, gonna generate more force. Well, so, he, was, he was a top contender at um, 170. So you want to watch a good fight that gives an example of size does matter. Watch Dominic Cruz versus Demetrius Johnson. Demetrius Johnson is 100 percent a better mixed martial artist in every facet, but size in that fight just. That's the only reason why Dominic dominated in a minute. And that was yeah. for a title fight. You, you know another title fight that you can see the difference in size? Uh, Israel Adesanya versus Jan Blahovic. Jan basically just laid on him, and Izzy could do nothing. And Izzy's takedown defense isn't bad. He's not a, uh, he's a, he's a, obviously, he's a notable kickboxer, so he, his strength isn't in the area of grappling. However, Jan dominated that fight and showed that you know you, there is a... It's a size size matters a lot, especially at the top. Like I mean, in a if you talk about a prelim fighter or someone um, trying to make the roster on a contender series, it might um, not matter as much. But when you get to the top, every little bit's going to matter. And if you you got a guy that's much stronger than you, bigger than you, he's a natural two hundred and twenty pound guy, and you're naturally a one hundred eighty five pound guy, you're giving up a lot. Momo. Let's uh get back on track with the whole style bender and what's the name? Poetan? Poetan? Poetan, yeah. That's not uh Neymar from Black Panther, right? No, he's the sleeping statue right now. His name was crazy. But uh I honestly didn't see that finish happening the way it did. And I don't care what anybody says. Or even if Izzy says it, he was he was taking some shots. He wasn't playing possum. So he saw the, it. Hold on, John. Hold on, hold on, John. Hold on, John. Hold on, John. Hold on, John. He was taking some shots. Tell me he wasn't. He was taking some shots. Sure. But he recovered his, quickly and saw that opening and KO. His legs were eaten up too. I know you say you don't care when I know you say you don't care when nobody says, but somebody before the fight started said that Izzy would finish within three, that somebody is right now speaking. I, I, I thought that this fight, the first fight was obviously, it was a, it was a great fight. Uh, and Izzy got caught toward the end of the fifth round and got, you know, TKO'd. But if you remember the, the, the beginning of the, in the end of the first round, Izzy caught Alex with a couple of shots that had him wobble. And I think that he noticed that in those close range against the cage exchanges, Alex tends to leave his hands down. And that's why I think he took the rematch so soon against Eugene, um, Eugene's his head coach, against his like um, advice. He wanted Izzy to take more time off and get ready for the fight, but Izzy wanted it immediately. I think he thought that in that mo- moment, in those spots where it's in close range, because obviously Alex is a great kickboxer. His record speaks for itself. He's a great kickboxer, and so is Israel Adesanya. But it, specifically against the cage and in those tight windows where Alex is going for it, he does tend to leave himself opening open. And Izzy saw that. And he thought he can exploit that in the second matchup. That's why I took the fight going under three rounds. I expected a different type of fight. I expected it to be a, a more of a firefight, more like Calvin Gastelum versus um, Izzy, where it's like they're they're gonna he's, they're just gonna go for it. There's gonna be a lot of a lot of counter shots. You're gonna get in the fire trade and best man wins and i think that's what we saw we saw izzy absorb a lot of shots against defense but he was waiting for that opening as well saw that opening took it beautiful check left hook um check left hook counter uh and over overhand right to put up to wobble him and then another overhand right to put him down and obviously the ground and pound uh stiffened his toes John, so uh uh the narrative of of Izzy changed over the course of the night. I, I for sure he was hurt. Uh, he, he 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 was stunned, but he also had in the back of his mind that Alex is a great fighter and he knows how to like be defensive. But when he gets in close and he goes for the kill, like he always drops his hands. And what caught him in the first fight in the first at the end of the first round was. He, he jabbed, and then the follow up on the of the one two. He left the the jab in his face, and then he followed up with overhand right. And if you notice, all of his his success in the first fight, and all throughout was doing that exact same thing and leaving it in his face, or using it to pull down his hands and popping him with the right. 
Um, so I, I think that was like something that he had in his mind to exploit as well, like like you were saying. And I mean, it, it he sprung it together beautifully. But up until that moment, Alex was you know winning and getting the leg kicks in early and getting multiple in and checking every one of Izzy's. Like it, it really felt like oh. And Izzy even spoke to it like, not again. Like, um, it, I think it, it was incredible uh, that he managed to withstand the, the the punishment to get his pick a shot and go for it. Um, I'm curious to see how Alex recovered, like how he if he's going to change how he fights because like that's a that's something he does in all his fights, and you even see it in his kickboxing days. <laughs> But how many people are that skillful to be able to do that to him? You know what I mean? Like, Izzy is a special breed of fighter. Like, they, they both are. Like, I'll, I'll say this, though. I know I know one fighter that if, if he goes up to 205, there's one fighter that can exploit that exact same thing really well, and that's Jamal Hill. If you stand up with Jamal Hill and you have holes in your boxing, you're going to be taking a uh, nice little cage nap. Yeah, it, it'll be... Uh... I'm very curious to see how that fight plays out. If it does, I mean, we, we're all—it's all speculation, obviously, at this point. Because I mean, yeah, I, I do believe Alex Pereira. He even he said this in the uh, pre-fight interview that this might be the last time you see him fight Adesanya. And I was I was assuming that that meant he thought he was going to win the fight, close the chapter, and then move on to 205. But having lost the fight, especially in like devastating fashion early, he got knocked out in the second round. So I, maybe that might change the tune, and he might want to get another fight with Adesanya at eighty-five. Wait. However, however, I think that he may be eyeing uh, two hundred five, and if he does two hundred five, I mean, right now there are some good contenders at two hundred five, and the obvious, the champ right now, Jamal Hill, that would be an intriguing matchup. Obviously, with the storylines you mentioned earlier of him being. Um, training partners with Glover Teixeira, and um, we got the injury to Yuri Pahaska that kept, that kept him out of the action for a while. He'll be back too, so there's some good fights for Alex moving up to 205 that I'm intrigued by. Yeah, sure. So um, we mentioned Jan earlier, and he, he sent out a tweet, and I don't know how serious he was, but he was asking Izzy if he wanted, like, you're asking on the rematch, if you ever want to redo it, I'm always mm -hmm. down, but let's do it at 185 for your belt. So, I mean, if he's serious, I would I would love to see Jan cut down to 185. You know damn well Again? he going to be, like, so tired. He Again? might die cutting weight. He was 85? Didn't, didn't, didn't he compete at 85? I believe so. There's a reason why he moved up to 205. Hmm. But I think he would move down for that fight, though. It'd be interesting to see a guy of his age cut that much weight and be successful. That would be interesting to see. Um, I, I wouldn't be. I wouldn't. I wouldn't. I wouldn't bet on it. But I, it'd be I interesting to see. It would be interesting to see a guy of um, Jan's age uh, drop that much weight. Well, I I think it is really telling that he even like sent that out because to me that implies that he doesn't see a title contention at light heavyweight in its future. So he's probably trying to go for a title while he still has some years left in the tank. Yeah, I mean, fighting for the title is a much bigger paycheck than not. Yeah. Okay, okay. So we we got an idea of where Poetan's going, right? It's either 205 or maybe a rematch with Izzy, right? Mm -hmm. Who's got Girl. Izzy next then? You know what I'm saying? Who's got Izzy next? Well, so apparently we have Costa and Kamzat. Oh yeah, you said. Oh yeah, you, did, did you say that before we uh, started so, recording, or that news. was uh, prior? Yeah, this is this is breaking news for the podcast. Wait, 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 John. Um, I got something for you. Hold on. Wait, 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 wait. Breaking news. <laughs> So the fight card in Abu Dhabi is From being headlined, headlined by Islam Makachev. He he won't be fighting for about five months, but 
he will be facing the winner of Charles Oliveira versus Benny Darush. The winner fighting Makhachev for the title in Abu Dhabi. And on the co-main, you have Kamzat Chimaev, lovingly dubbed Chinchin by Paulo Costa, fighting not other than Paulo Costa. Could this be a number one contender fight? I don't know, but for sure, if Kamzat gets that win under his belt, you know how they love to push stars. They might give him a title shot. Hold on, John. Uh, when's that fight supposed to take place? What's the date? Um, it's it's in the Abu Dhabi. Um, and remember, they said um, Islam wouldn't have to be fighting um, during Ramadan and all that. So I think it's in about five months or so. Hold on, hold on. So, oh, okay. Oh, I get what you're saying. So Hamza is fighting Costa on the Abu Dhabi card. That's what you're saying, right? Correct. And, oh, man. Oh, man. Three minute or three round fight. And Islam is fighting the winner of the upcoming fight between uh, Darius and Oliveira, correct? Yes. Man, I wish I had some better uh, breaking news sounds like dun, 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 or something, you know what I mean? Like, so, <laughs> stuff. But we do know Izzy uh, wants to fight, fight three times a year. So he's just got this. So. Uh, he definitely won't be fighting either of those two because they have they have partners now. So who does that leave? That leaves Robert Whitaker. Could we see the the trilogy? Hold on, hold on. before anybody says anything, perhaps I'm letting Mark take this one. Let Mark handle this one. Trust me. I I don't think that they're gonna give it to Robert Whitaker because it's happened so many times, but. Uh, Adesanya did call out Duplissy, so... Well, no, he, he did not call out Duplissis. He, he said that he wants him to win, he, keep winning, so he, he could drag his carcass across the octagon. Right, and he didn't even mention him by name, but he said he wants to beat him and drag him across South Africa. So... Yeah. But he needs some more wins, so he needs a dance partner as well. Uh... Could it could it be that they, they might make the Duplissy... Uh, Robert fight, and then have that be a, a contender fight. But I would love that fight. But personally, yeah. I, I I don't think they would. I, I I don't think Robert's path to a another title shot is impossible. Um, because he has he has been fighting guys, and I I do think it's possible for him to beat Izzy. I I he just hasn't got all the pieces like, he hasn't assembled the pieces but he has everything he needs to do that. you know what i mean what's up mo what's on your what's on your heart man johnny dubs i will take robert whitaker for 20 solid push-ups on that day if we're all together watching it chest to the ground chin to the ground i don't care so i got so you're I got getting, Rob. getting four or against i got rob I got Rob. You could take DDP all day, all day. Oh, oh, for that fight. You, fight? you for take fight? DDP all day. That's your boy. I got Rob. That okay? I thought you were talking about Rob Izzy. Um, oh no, no, no! I'm talking talk. about your boy DDP. That's, DDP. Versus that's your man's. Rob? That's your man's. That's your man's. I got Rob. You take your man's. Ah. Uh... Well, first he need, if he gets his uh, rhinoplasty and fixes his nose, because he you know every time he's like second round he's breathing out of his mouth because he can't breathe through his nose. If he gets that shit fixed, maybe I, I don't even know because Robert is an all time great. Yes, you know what I'm um, hearing over here. So if he does get his nose fixed, then you willing to make the bet? No, no, I, I, I want to see him get that nose fixed and see how he's performing. I don't think, I, I hope they don't give him Robert right away. What if he, wait, John, John, what if he made a ten? What if he made a ten push-ups? I'm, no, no, I, I'm, I'm not going to make Ducking. a absurd bet. I think, and I said Drickus could be champion in a few years. He needs to go through and improve his game. Like, there's levels to it. You he's know? currently ranked number six. 
So that, that's not leaving many uh, scrubs for him to fight. I'm gonna go up. Well, wait, I need to go for uh, Strickland or uh, Cannoneer. Uh, Strickland's under him. Is forward. Strickland's backwards. Well, I mean they're right next to each other, so well, I can see that all, one happening. Those would be good. Uh, well, you know what? You, if hmm? Sean gets another win, he could be a title contender. Nah, man. Just because he's new blood, just no. lose. He I want one. He lost. Didn't he lose to Alex? But didn't win his next fight. Yeah, and then he got a controversial no. decision. He, and then he he, he took a short notice and beat the guy. Lost two in a row, didn't he? And then he he won the short notice. Right. Who did he lose? To? I know he got knocked out. He, he, he lost to Cannoneer. Oh, Pereira. He lost yeah. to Cannoneer. Yeah, yeah he lost Pereira. to Cannoneer and Pereira. In a controversial decision. Yeah, then he who'd, won who'd, the who'd, next one. Who did he win against? Who did he win against? I'll look it up real quick. I'm right here. I'm a I'm a Bob, so, whatever. Which is which is what I'm saying. If he gets a another win or two, he might because who who's next for Izzy though? Um, that he hasn't already beat. It, it, it's Strickland as new blood comes up as soon as he gets a victory. Uh, and then, you know, he said Drick, Drickus needs one more win or a couple more wins. So, I mean, he, he's going to have to repeat a dance partner. It all stems uh, from the I'm more African than you comment. That's where this is coming from. I'm assuming. Uh, oh, uh a very bold statement from someone that we, I personally loathe, and I think he's a bum, but uh, Bilal Muhammad said that if he's not going to get what he wants at 170, which is Kamaru Usman or Leon or Colby, he will go up to 185 and fight uh, Robert Whitaker, Israel Asanya, or um, Sean Strickland. And Strickland replied to this not too long ago, uh, Calling him out, like, you're, you're a bitch, we were at the Performance Institute, mm -hmm. I, I asked you if you wanted to throw down, and you smiled weirdly and looked around for help and walked away like a bitch. So, uh, Bilal Muhammad, being very catty, passive-aggressive on uh, social media lately, um, but no one really knows or cares because he's a prelim fighter. That sounds just like Kobe Covington. John, I have one question though. Why, why do you loathe Bully B? What did he do to you? And how has he earned to become a bum? Did he put his hands on you? What did he do to you? Did he touch you? <laughs> uh, <laughs> did he put his finger on you? He I, show I, us, show I, us on the doll where he touched you. I just have a a, a visceral dislike. Of him, uh, I think his um, personality in interviews and media appearances, and just his overall bearing—like he's very passive aggressive and catty. It's it's very woman-like behavior, and uh, he's a boring fighter, mm. and he doesn't even have a, a good shtick going for him. If he if he were to like, I was, someone else is saying this. Like we were talking, like if he were to lean in. And do like an iron chic kind of persona, or like to like go back, have a back and forth with Colby. That that could be compelling, or just any sort of like something to get you like. Because right now he has a eh, record or in, in resume, uh, and I know you're gonna say all these wins, but they would have been dismissed if he uh, didn't get the eye poke and quit with the Leon fight. But. He also has fought the same guys that Colby did, but they were older and much more, you know, mild one on them. Here's what's he, interesting about here's what's interesting about that too. They won in this in similar ways. Like it's if you look if you just had a a, a breakdown of a fight, how they won, and you described it, you but you basically naming the same guy. You're talking about. Kobe twice. Like Kobe is very catty, very um sassy in the in on Twitter, but in real life he's not that guy. 
doesn't he doesn't act he doesn't he's not in your face and um be keeping that same energy that he does online when he meets fighters at his own gym in restaurants at um the performance institute if he ever goes uh he's very very much like Bilal in that manner and he also is um a grinder like a decision fighter where he he's not gonna wow you with his knockout punches he's not submitting guys in under one round anything like that he's more methodical holds you against the cage wear you out very very similar to kobe so i mean they're basically they almost mirror images of each other as far as results and um persona except kobe is a little bit more over the top with his I, uh, and he, he does a good job of making people i guess like well, some love him and some hate him, whereas people are kind of lukewarm across the board with Bilal. I think Bilal tries to make it seem real, and Kobe's just full heel. He went all yeah. the way in on heel. Yeah, it's it's a very clear bit with Kobe, right? And you like it's it's something he turns on, and it's he's he's just aping Chael Sonnen and Trump. Like he's got those two personas mixed together and that's what he's been doing and it's it is entertaining though like it, it even if you don't like it you are draw you want to see him fight because you want to see his ass get kicked or you know you enjoy it you want to see him win like two sides of the same point yeah Whereas, um that's the that's the uh, mayweather blueprint but it's it's, oh, it's, it's, it's um it's, that's um I, I like I like that part. I, I have no issue at all with how guys market themselves and try to make more money in fight sports. I have no issue. My only thing with Kobe is his inactivity and his unwillingness to fight the contenders in the division. He's basically only willing to fight guys who are kind of over the hill or for a title. And I understand why. I mean, look, you're gonna get better results that way you're going to get a bigger paycheck every single time you fight a title fight that's just how it goes and obviously like obviously like not not competing against guys like gilbert burns um who's who's like right there in the, in the top three well now he's number one we never seen a matchup with this guy when kobe they had a, they've been in the, the the division for you know almost a decade together and we no matchup between the, um these two guys and that's that's my only issue with it. Bilal does answer the call when it comes to fighting whoever gets booked in front of him. Well, no one want, not, not a lot of people want to take that Sean Brady fight. He, with Sean being with Sean Brady, not there's not much upside because Sean's on. I mean, he doesn't have a in the hardcore realm. Everyone knows he, you know, his ability and but he doesn't have a name behind it. So you don't get any hype by beating him, but he can steal all of yours. And this, that, that, that's, that's a, he was a fighter that didn't, not, not a lot of top contending guys were like jumping at the bit to fight. And well, Bilal took that fight and ended up winning in impressive fashion. So I think that's my only thing. The only difference between two of the guys, it, to me, they're the, they're the same guy. They're both. I, I um, they, they, to, to me, that's fine. You can disagree, but to to me, they're the same guy. Is in the in the mode of they're both never going to be champion unless they get a Michael Bisbing situation. They're both very. They're both basically kind of mediocre to me. I um, and and, and, and and the only way they're ever going to win a title is if it's a Michael Bisbing situation where there's just an easy path to the to, to the championship like there's no long reigning dominant guy at that weight division at that time but neither one of them will get the belt and even if they did neither one of them will hold it at all i don't see any one of those guys either I, winning the championship or holding the championship at all i i i will take you up on that bet yeah I, well i mean right now um history's on my side because kobe had two title shots and lost them both Bilal hasn't even gotten sniffed the title shot. They've been in the game for 10 years. They're not spring chickens. And these guys that are young, up and coming, that are better than them, who are on the rise, who will, will I don't, I see them as being a matchup nightmare for them. I think so, Shavkat, Shavkat will be a matchup nightmare for Kobe. Right. 
not. So, so how how will he hold this thing? Even if he even if he manages to even if he manages to hold Leon down for dear life, pray to every god he believes in, and hold Leon Edwards on the uh, on the floor, do no damage for twenty five minutes as he always does, hold him down and make it a sweaty, boring, slow wrestling match, and take the title from Leon Edwards, he's not holding it, buddy. So well, <laughs> he's he's uh, not like the guys the guys that are below him who are better fighters. Will do exactly what Islam, what what do exactly what Kamaru Usman did, and that's rearrange his face. Yo, you think Burns will do that to him? Yes, B- Burns will. Burns will rearrange his face the same way he rearranged Kamzat's face. He will rearrange Kobe's face. Burns is not scared mm-hmm. of being grappled with at all. He, he's not worried about being um, held against the cage. He embraces grappling, and his he has dynamite in his hands. So, yes, I do believe he will rearrange Kobe's face if they ever matched up. You know who else believes that? I think Kobe believes that because Kobe wouldn't it wouldn't even sniff that fight. And they've been in the same division for 10 years. I mean, it's, it's not up to them to make that match. I mean, I, I haven't heard. Go- you can, you can, all you can talk your way into any fight. Years. You can, uh, Kobe can talk his way into any fight. You never know. He never mentions that guy. Hold on. So we're, we're so, on the Masvidal yeah. and uh, Gilbert Burns. Side of this well, uh, past pay per view now. Well, oh, yeah, so, we, yeah. we we uh got there right. Sure, I, I, let's I, get it. So but, um, so hold on, hold on, hold on, John. I know you. I know. I know you want to go in with this. I, I, I know you do. We'll save well, no, that I, for I, after. I I just go ahead. Burns John, go ahead. Is getting uh the next title shot after Colby. Like Dana, Dana said that, and he's going to be the backup fighter. Oh, Dana said that? Yeah. What? I, I trust everything that Dana says because that man never lies. He got bald he sticks. To, he sticks to his word every single time. I trust him fully. He like I know we never I knew we never get to see women fighting on um, the UFC until, you know, we did. Even though he said he'd never see it. I trust Dana I, like you know, with everything. I, I know I, that I, this I man will right. only say I know that this man will only speak the truth, the absolute truth, and nothing but the truth. But to be fair, I trust Dana more than every member in Congress. Not saying I get, the, I get I get to hear Dana talk more than every member in Congress in Congress too. So I mean, I guess I got a bigger sample size of Dana lying to me. All right, guys, let's get back on track with this one. We're trying to be a little somewhat formatted today. So you we had uh, Miles uh, Burns. Yeah, we had Scarface. He didn't. He didn't say he retired, but did he retire? Yes. Mm. He should. I would say at this point right now. I mean, he meant he didn't say he retired, but he did say I'm a I'm a very wealthy man. Sport has made me a, a multi millionaire. I've been 20 years in this game. That does not sound to me like the words of somebody who wants to jump back in there. I I would say. If he does get back in there, there are some intriguing matchups that wouldn't necess- that would necessarily. Uh, I mean, he would still be competitive in. I mean, he he can fight a big money fight with a guy like. Um, well, obviously he's been he was asking for this fight for years, and now it can possibly happen if he can get a, fi- a 170 pound matchup against Conor McGregor. That'll be a really big money fight, and I think that. That can happen, especially given that, you know, Masvidal has come off. Masvidal's been, what, is this four losses, three losses, or something like that? Three in a row? Four in a row? Yeah, so it's, it's, four, it's parody. So it's, it's, so it's four losses in a row, and we know Conor loves fighting guys like that. I mean, especially on the comeback fights. <laughs> on comeback fights, because he fought Donald Cerrone on a comeback fight. When he, when he first left and came back, he fought Cerrone. And that was a matchup where I think most people going in knew that Conor could dominate that fight, and he did. And then here's another one where I'm pretty sure everyone's going to be on board with Connor um, sending George into official retirement if they did match up at 170. Another I'm one in Miami. Like, it, mm-hmm. If he's going to do uh, like fun fights, you know, just like I, 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 I do like him to uh, like sometimes, you know, he's a journeyman. He's not a great fighter and he's been living off the hype of that flying knee. But if he's not like an actual serious contender and he just wants to have fun, uh, I, there's a lot of 
a lot of possibilities there. And he he gets, I, I believe he gets uh, pay-per-view points, even if it's not title fights, because he got some from the Colby fight. So that might be part of his contract. Can but I just regardless. remind you guys about lightweight Jorge? How good he was? And how he never got his shine? You know, short hair, had the, uh, the, the, mm-hmm. the fade, you know what I mean? Tape up. Yeah. Had the I remember beard, that guy. You know what I mean? Cuban B. That was my boy back in the day. We saw this man oh. get robbed decision after decision when he should have won them fights. And he was so well-rounded. That's when him and Kobe were like Yeah, and, and Kobe, was saying, Kobe was even more upset than, than he was. Exactly. That yeah, Jorge? I, I, I would love to see. Mm. I would love to see that though. I think that that's pretty much. I can't really think of many other matches though. That's it. Like I, all I see is that that matchup with him and McGregor. Yeah, it's one one uh, one. There's all eyes on that fight. This is gonna be. It's, it can main be event. A, obvious. It, it can be an easy main event pay per view. Miami easy. sell crazy numbers. Both of those guys will make a lot of money, and competitively, I think it would be fairly even. I mean, I would give the edge to to um. To McGregor at this point in their careers, given that like Masvidal does seem a bit slower, like in that fight against Burns, at least he seemed a little bit slower, especially in the striking. Like, he was coming up short on a lot of his um like counter left hooks. Every time he would throw punches, he was swinging at air. He seemed like I don't know if it was Burns just looking more impressive and fast, or if it was. George slowing down, but to me it just looked like George is kind of slowing down a bit. And he did look, I mean, he didn't. He looked slow against Kobe as well. So it, 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 maybe those guys are just both faster than him at this point in their career, or he's taking a step down. And oh, the, the way the way he spoke at the end of that fight, it seems to me as if he kind of knows it too. That he's that he said, "I've been in this game for twenty years." If you want to count his street stuff, more than that. But he's been in the fight business for a very long time. And this dude is like, you know, he's made a lot of money in the sport. He's fought for two world titles. And he's done a lot. Like, he's his contract, like you said, he got pay-per-view points. Um, maybe written in his contract. I don't get to see his contract. I'm not his lawyer. I don't know. But we're assuming that he does because of the, the results. And if you're getting that big a payday, he also has his own fight promotion with the the boxing thing that he did that was actually pretty good. Like those fighters got paid well. So if he got if he has money coming in from all these other streams, it it really doesn't make sense for him to stay in MMA where if he's not fighting for a title or competing in some really, really intriguing big money fight, who is he gonna fight? Like some kind of up and comer and be a gatekeeper and fight someone like, you know, someone on the rise? would just you know further like i would say embarrass him no disrespect to jorge but the guys that are coming up are they're a lot faster and a lot stronger they're better they're, they're learning from the guys that came before them and they're just getting better they're evolving so he's well, gonna be in a situation where he's gonna be at a very bad uh, in a very bad matchup against an unknown if he stays in the game i have are you telling me that the pinnacle of MMA analysis, Joe Rogan was wrong. That Jorge is is not better than GSP. Um, I don't take Joe's I, Joe's. I don't take Joe's word for gospel. I think um, he he he's a, he likes he likes Joe Jorge Masvidal. He had him on the podcast, and as he treats all his podcast mates or podcast mm-hmm. guests, he's just um he's very respectful and um he gives them a lot of props. I don't think it's like he he truly believes that. Um, Jorge is better than GSP. I don't think that's a real, di- a real thing. Well, that, GSP's that's one. Of the, that, I don't think that's real. I think that's just him buttering up um, his podcast. Podcast. Well, that, that was on a separate. Like Jorge wasn't even in the studio for that. He was like saying that to someone unprompted or someone else, like, which is kind of wild. John, I mean, Joe was on drugs. Me, yeah, maybe. Me I mean, yeah, yeah. I mean, maybe yeah, I gotta maybe, know all the context in that that yeah, comment. Because I don't, I don't, I don't believe. I, I listen to a lot of hours of Joe, and I don't believe he. I don't think he truly believes that that, that um, or he is even in the same realm as. Um, oh, I, I know what you're talking about now. I do remember. I think he was saying that like the fighters of yesteryear, like guys like GSP, 
against guys uh, in the current era where there's you know all the new nutrition and science behind it. Oh. I think he's saying that like the contenders that George faced, you know, would struggle against the new guys like like guys like Masvidal. If he was to fight the guys that you know like John Fitch or um, Josh Koscheck, you know, all the guys that GSP faced in his title run, that George could probably wreck them as well. I, I I agree with that. I mean, the sport evolves. If you go back, way back when, and look at the heavyweight champions, then, dude, like he Tim Sylvia, him. Tim Sylvia would get the shit kicked out of him by like the number twelve guy at heavyweight now. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Jorge was around back then, and that's all mm-hmm. I have to say. He, about well, that. Jorge mm-hmm. was in the game before he, GSP. He was around back then, but he wasn't fighting at one hundred seventy pounds. No, he was the lightweight Jorge. The right, killer. right. So like, yeah. he wasn't he wasn't competing at 170 pounds. The one getting robbed of all the decisions, right? And if you think he's getting robbed at 55, let me tell you right now, you don't want to see Anthony Rumble Johnson at 170. You don't want to see fuck, all those all those monsters at 170 back then. No, yeah. I no. Even Time dude, a, a guy different. like Paul Daly, a guy like Paul Daly would probably give him problems. Who? I right. would I would actually argue the fact that. I think Masvidal moved up at a time where 170 was getting weaker, in my honest opinion. Because it wasn't too long after the USADA change and everything like that. And 170 got a lot weaker after the USADA implications. Yeah, all those uh, that may be, that may be the case. had to move back up. Right. Well, a lot, of guys, a lot well, of guys made a shift. And you saw a lot, yeah. you saw a lot of movement upward. Like you saw mm-hmm. Jan Blachowicz move up. You saw um, Thiago Santos move up. You saw um, guys like um, Kelvin Gastelum, who was at 170. He moved up to 185. Former you saw a lot first. of movement. You saw a lot of movement upward. And I, I don't know if that's a result, a direct result of USADA or a direct result of those guys just getting older. And it's just more difficult to make the weight, to cut weight and cut that much weight. Some of it was because USADA brought in the IV band also. So the, the without IVs, it became harder to cut that weight. But that makes sense. What that was makes the sense. Guy? The hip, the welterweight champion after GSP, he beat the brakes off GSP though. Johnny Before Hendricks. Johnny yeah, that Hendricks. guy. He moved up, and everything changed for that guy when you saw the showed up. Yeah, he got a steakhouse <laughs> after that, and just couldn't stop eating steaks. I did. Steaks? I list. I, I purposefully listed. You had the to guys get protein had... from somewhere. Well, I purposefully listed the guys that had success moving up. I didn't mention Rob. I didn't mention Robert Whitaker and Gilbert Burns on purpose as well. But I did. I did purposefully mention the guys who had success. There were a lot of guys who had who did worse when they moved up. Um, Gustafson looked terrible moving up. Um, Chris Weidman didn't look good moving up. There were a lot of guys that moved that went up in weight. Like Johnny Hendricks did, Rock and, and, got wrecked, and got wrecked. Rock hold. So, yeah, Rockhold, Till. There's a, there's a there's a lot of names that we can mention. I didn't want to shit on those guys and give them straight bullets for no reason. I only mentioned yeah. the guys that uh yeah, let's not that, do that. that did well on purpose. Because I mean, like, look, I don't want to disrespect these guys. These guys, are, all these guys are warriors. If you decide to get in there, put the gloves on, and scrap it out, I got a lot of respect for you. I might talk a lot of shit about like certain styles and certain people when it comes to like their, their performance in the cage but that the, the point that over that over um that supersedes all that is i have a lot of respect for every single fighter that ever gets in the cage and puts um puts on the fight it takes a lot of courage to even um get in those gates so uh i do think that it's really difficult to move move down in weight and it's easier done when you're younger. You can recover a little bit faster. You can, um, you know, shed that and suffer a little bit more when you're younger and get down to that weight and be the bigger, stronger guy on fight day. But once you start getting a little bit older, it gets more and more difficult. And I think that we're seeing a lot of guys make that jump sooner as opposed to like later in their careers. Because I think when they get too far gone, you even if you don't cut weight, the guys you're competing against are not only bigger; they're still in their athletic primes. So you're not you you lose an advantage on two fronts. You're not the bigger, stronger guy anymore, and you're fighting the guy who is at his athletic prime when you're on an athletic decline. 
All right. Speaking of the the youth, I had two prospects. <laughs> two prospects failed me. That's all I gotta say. I did some push-ups. I, I told you. And I told I, yeah, I try, you, John. You John, didn't tell John, me nothing. I ain't seen you in weeks. John, what do you mean? John, I tried to warn him, bro. I tried, he was he was trying to go against the cartel. I was like, bro, don't go against the cartel. You know Relax. I'm gonna go against I, them. My, I know, I know. My Hawaiian brother went against them, and he proved something. <laughs> I tried to warn you, man. Why fun? Um, hey, I thought my, I like I like you know Andrew what it is. as well. Let, let me tell you, I know what it is. But I think uh, I'm not sure what nationality Yanez is, but Rob Font's Puerto Rican, and he's from up north. So, <laughs> being like how my father is, I went against the grain. And he from the up north, mm-hmm. and he Puerto Rican too. So I deserved, I deserved everything that I received. Now with with Roses, Moon Man, I, he just couldn't I, get it I, done, bro. He shot his load in the first two minutes, no, right, John? I, t- I told you, you I told, told you he's on height train. What'd you tell me? I told you guys that. Well, when was this? Ago. I, I months ago. I when? was shit talking him when? because. Like, one of our very early podcasts I was on, like, you guys were hating on me for, for talking shit about this young kid, Bantamweight. Especially when he's talking about, oh, I beat Aljo. I'm going to be the first ever triple champ. I'm going to be the youngest champion in existence. Okay. Okay. You got I, expect the young person, I, I expect young people to talk like that. We got it from Macy Barber when she was the future. You get that. You get when you're young and you feel like you're, you know, you know it all and you, you can do it all. Of course, you got piss and vinegar in your in your vein. You ready to go? Right. Like I expect to hear but that kind of stuff. But I that's also when love... I knew though. That's like I I heard that. And I was like, okay, this guy is not ready because he's gonna get into deep water, and he's not gonna know how to swim. Well, and, but some guys, they some people have that same amount of bravado, confidence, and they execute in those moments. They 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 go. That's how you become a superstar. That's how you become. The Conor McGregor's and the John Jones of the world. When you're this young phenom running through everybody and talk and you know letting it be known that you're going for the, the the gold and you get there and you you know make good on that promise, then you become a superstar. I mean, that's why I don't give a whole lot of um, credit to guys like Hamzat Hamzat Tamayev and um, Shavkat. I'm like, yeah, they look like intriguing prospects. They look great against the guys they're fighting. But to, to, to say that there will be a, a matchup advantage against the guys who are at the top who proved it, you got to show me. I don't I, I don't see him. Like, people were flapping at the gums, talking about how badly Hamzat would beat Kamaru. And I'm like, buddy, he's not. who has he fought to make you believe that? Name, who are these guys that he's, he's running through that makes you believe that he can run through the cream of the crop? I mean, no. He got to show me that. People gas up these prospects like way. Sure. Uh, like, uh, you have to. Zayev, Zayev was uh, someone who was saying, oh, he's going to beat Justin's ass. He's going to be the, right. And we saw how that turned out. But that was exactly. a good fight, though. That was a, speaking of, was a great it was, fight. It was an amazing fight. Speaking amazing of, fight. Of, of Justin, um, I'm he- hearing the Dustin and Justin fight part two this summer. Well, that'd be that'd be great. Um, but let's let's stick to the card. Let's John, stick to this. Um, on eighty seven. We'll leave that towards the end. Well, the the rumors, hearsay, and whatnots for the MMA chit chat portion. Yeah. Leave let's that stick towards to, the end. Let's stick to one eighty seven. Because one eighty seven had oh, how? Let me just ask this question before we move further. Two eighty seven. Two eighty seven. Two one eighty seven. I'm thinking of Snoop Dogg. We my all. Bad. I, I'm like one eight seven. Anyways. When, let's stick to this 287 card, and I have a few questions. My first question is, how do you grade this card as a whole for for a card of the year? What do you think? Um, what do you guys think of that? Can I go first? I, 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 go I first. have a question. Well, real quick. Go ahead, John. Are we are we counting prelims or not? Not uh, early um, prelims. No. Let's go with uh, 8 o'clock prelims on. This, this, just, this, this card as a whole, because I, I think that how do you rank this card as a whole year to date? Like for, for for as far as the year's concerned, all the cards that have happened. How do so, you rank specifically this card? What fights? All right, what, let's let's go over them. Uh, we have the Jamal Hill Glover one. We have the uh, Volk Makachev. We have 
Gon Jones, we have Uvin Leon, and then we have this. And remember, hold on, John, remember, we're not just talking about the main event, the card in its entirety. Well, well that, that's, that's what I'm, I'm saying, the, the, the cards. Like, the, the, those are the, we've had five. Right, right. No, I, I, I hear you. I'm saying, like, when you, when you give this card a grade, grade it on, its, on the card in its entirety. What do you, I'm, what, I'm not what, counting prelims. What, I'm, I'm counting the what, headline what, prelim. And that's, what letter? What letter grade would you give this card? I'll, I'll let others go before me. I'm thinking. What, what, Mark, you have a, you have anything? A minus. A minus. Yes. It's it's an A card because there there has there's not one fight on the main card that I dazed off in. Uh, you know me, I'm normally like halfway falling asleep by the time the main card comes on because I'm just so <laughs> tired, but I was up this whole time. I was excited for a lot of these fights that they kept me entertained the whole way through. Um, and a couple of them kept me guessing. So yeah, you mind this? There, there wasn't a bad fight on the main card. The prelims had a couple decent fights. Probably one of the best fights was on the prelims. Mm-hmm. Um, Probably, I, in my opinion, I, if we think if we're thinking of the same fight as I'd say it was intended for fight of, fight of the night, if we're thinking, if we're thinking of the same fight, which fight? Which fight? I, are you I of? think it actually did win fight of the night. Wait, which which fight are you thinking of? I'm thinking uh, Curtis versus Gaslam. Yes, 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 mm-hmm. yes. That that that's why I said I'm not counting prelims except for the, the headline. Hey. Which so so that, no, we'll, Mo, which what, what letter grade would you give this card as a whole? I'm about to answer that because, well, no. First, I have a question because I'm not sure if it was this year because the question was, if, is this the best fight card of the year, right? Right. No, not not if it's the best fight card of the year. I'm asking specifically, where would you rank this fight card? Oh, okay. And not whether it's the best or not, but what what letter grade? Would you give this specific fight card overall? From what I viewed, I I give it a solid A minus because it had that's, everything that's you needed. It, it had everything you needed. Oh, somebody else said A minus. Oh I yeah, said A-. yeah. Mark, Mark did too. Because yeah. you know I stepped out, and grabbed me a, a refreshment. But uh, hold on, hold on. What's the grade so far? So far, two that A minus, A minus. John, this card. Just, just John. And John hasn't. Wait. He says he's gonna. He's gonna. Um, wait. Oh, he yeah, goes. I'm, last trying, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to. I'm. 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 Uh, like actually doing an analysis right now. I want to give a fair assessment. The reason why so I say like, a minus because it had everything you needed for it to be a successful card in a way. If you don't count the prelims, okay, you got story storylines. You got two upcoming prospects. Both failed the task. You got the second fight of the main card. Two, I guess you could call them veterans now. They've been in the game for a good bit. They both have names. And the outcome of the fight is what you would anticipate. It was fireworks with uh, Holland and Pazanibio. Am I right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It was and fireworks. Then, then you got the co-main event with the King of Miami. Since Kimbo passed away, now it's Jorge. Jorge is the king right now of Miami until we get another Miami fighter to come up the ranks. You had him going out on a shield somewhat, even though he didn't go out. He just had him do his thing, represent the 305 where it's taking place. He says his thing in the end. You got that little story. Then you got the main event with a man that's lost three times to his biggest adversary. Almost his rival, I feel like. Like If they play golf, Izzy plays golf for two years. Next thing you know, Pereira decides to pick up golf and they go heads up. Who's going to win? Am I right? Or am I making stuff right. up? And he, I, I, he I like what that. he's supposed to do. Yeah, that's why I give well, it an A minus. 
initially I was gonna give this card an A plus. That was what my initial grade was gonna be. I thought this was a very a very good card across the board from like from the pre early prelims all the way up to the main event. Um, I downgraded that to an A, to just a, to just an A. I'm gonna get I give it an A. Um, like I said, we if you if I start at the top, I will say we got to me, and in reality, this this fight between Adesanya and Pereira is one to one. This is the only they only fought twice in MMA. I don't count anything they did before MMA because I mean, first of all, I don't care what you did in wrestling. I don't care what you did in kickboxing. I don't care what you did in boxing or whatever you did before joining MMA. I care about what you're doing in mixed martial arts. So your your previous amateur boxing record, your street fighting record, all that is out the window once you join the ranks of MMA. MMA. And in MMA, um, it was one it was one nil to uh, Alex Pereira coming in to this fight, and now it's one one with both guys um, getting knockouts in their fights. Well, one TKO, one knockout. Um, so right now they're one to one to one, and this was uh, a little. The entertainment value was good because we got the whole thing going full circle with Izzy knocking Alex out, uh, sh shooting arrows into his dead corpse, and then all, doing falling out and traumatizing his kid um, in the crowd. I was like, damn, like that's full circle. If you do want to count the old stuff, uh, Alex, Alex's son, years back. Uh, fell into Izzy, trolled him a little bit after his dad knocked him out, and he gave him the re uh, the reward back. Uh, kind of like the NC NCAA with uh, Ketlin, whatever, uh, was it Ketlin Clark with the whole, you can't see me, and then LSU, or you can't see me after, you know, the uh, LSU National Championship. He got a little full circle action. So I gave it an A for that storyline, you know, kind of, you know, coming to a, um, a end and Seeing Izzy get his title back, that was awesome. It was awesome to witness. And then um, you go further down the card, it was all fireworks. I mean, outside of the King of Miami fight, everything was just crazy action the whole way. You got, um, you know, Big Mouth coming back to being Big Mouth, you know, knocking out Santiago Ponzinibbio. And he made a funny comment in the middle of the fight. He was like, hey, man, do you smell weed? In the middle of the fight, out of nowhere, that shit was kind of funny. So we had some entertainment value with that. We had um, Rob Font, you know, solidify his case to get back into that title hunt with a beautiful knockout. I mean, that was crazy. I don't even know what you called that punch you hit him with. Is that a hook? Is it an uppercut? Is it a uppercut? I don't know what you called that fight. But that punch, but that added some real excitement to the card as far as like you got really good finishes you got some um hype trains derailed you got some drama you had a little bit of everything overall if you paid for ufc 267 am i saying right 287 297 i'm gonna get it right eventually if you say it, if you one of those is right if you <laughs> if you paid for ufc uh 287 i think you got your money's worth yeah, we absolutely paid for it. Every dollar, every penny, we paid for it right mm -hmm. here. Yeah. You betcha. We paid for individually. it. Individually. We each paid for it. Like we yeah, we bought, we bought. We were part we, of the millions. That we're four. Pay, we're, yes. we're at least four pay-per-view buyers. We bought it. And this is how dedicated to the game we are. We had four separate TVs with IP address routers so we can make sure we purchase individually on four TVs and watch it in the same house on different TVs because we love the game. And we even had one on the uh, tablet, so that's five, actually. There you go. Right. And that's about as true as everything I believe Dana says. Yes. Correct. John, how you feel, man? Uh, I was, I was initially going to give it an A. Uh -oh. but, um, I'm going to downgrade it to an A- minus because... The co co headline co main it 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 was lackluster compared to the rest of the card. Maybe that's a bias, but that it was disappointing. You know what I mean? Because we we had Burns come off that war with Shumayev, 
And, you know, some people said he could have won that. You know, he, he, you know, it could go either way. That was a crazy fight. I was there. And you have Jorge. So I was expect. I had a lot of hype for that fight. And it kind of, you know, let me down a little bit. But every other fight, from the Gashalem to the knockout of Piera, mm-hmm. other than the, the headline, amazing. Well worth it. So, uh, overall being A-, minus, um, it's good to see Gashalem get another W, uh, you know, because it, it, it blows my mind his career tra- trajectory. Because he had a, a, a barn burn with Izzy. Like, really amazing fight. And then he just has has had this slump. I'm glad he didn't get cut. Hopefully he uh, he can get another couple W's. And if you look I, at the... If you, his career... It, I like that you mentioned um, his career trajectory because with the, before that... He had a brilliant performance against Michael Bisbing, knocking him flat. Mm-hmm. He had an awesome performance against Tim Kennedy as well at 85. So he had some really good, notable wins at 85 before he went on that little slump. And it is good to see him back and looking good. He looked, he looked, he, he was energized. Homie was bouncing on his toes the whole fight and popping in and out, making it really difficult for Curtis to do much of anything. Um, until Curtis just abandoned, I guess, the game plan and just decided to trade blows and just, just scrap. Yeah. And, oh, man, what, what a chin on Gaston, you know? Question, it's, though. I got a question. Wasn't he scheduled originally to fight DDP like a few cards ago? Or am I mistaken? Gaston. I don't know. I don't it's, that sounds that sounds about right. I don't I don't, I don't think know. so. That sounds right. I think so. I don't see why. Yeah, it I think there was an injury in, involved. Yeah, was it? But like Duplessis ended guy? up fighting someone else, right? Short yeah, notice, fight. I think uh, something happened to Kelvin's jaw or something. Like he got a cut in his mouth or something like that, and he couldn't fight for X amount of time, and that's why this fight came up. I I think. Don't hold me to it. Well, it's been a while. And let's keep in mind, he uh, he's still pretty young. He's thirty one. So, if I, I don't know what happened to him, but if he can, if he can get himself back, like because he, he put it on a good showing this one, if he can somehow string a you know a few more, uh, I I kind of would like to see him go for a belt. Well, what you know, happened is he fought if, a lot of uh, of the top guys, man. Like when you yeah. lose to the top guys in the top five, you you end up getting pushed backwards. Yeah, I have a good, I have a really good matchup for him. I would love to see Gastelum, John Strickland. That's gonna happen. And, and it's gonna he, happen. You know, I think that you know, would, that would be a. I think that would be a. I think that would be a training partner. That would be a really exciting fight. Kelvin, Kelvin versus um. Kelvin, well, you got a storyline, right? Because isn't Action Man in the same camp as Sean Strickland? Homies. Yeah, and, and, and Strickland was was bitching about the, the scoring, and he was bitching about like the fight, and you know he's supporting his boy. So yeah, that would be a fun. That I love that idea. Homies. They need to make that happen. That would be a. I think that'd be a great fight, both for the storyline and um, the matchup. I think it's a really that'd be a fun fight to watch. Isn't uh, Derek Brunson retired now? Mm, I think so. I, I I don't know yeah. if he's official, but I think he did. I know after the fight with Duplessis, um, it wasn't a good showing because he. I mean, he did have Duplessis hurt in some in some moments in that fight, but uh, Brunson, as a contender at this point, is in the same boat as uh, Jorge. Well, I don't think he ever gets back to the point where he's contending for a title, mm. and even if he does, somehow make a make a miracle run. I don't see him holding it at all. I think he holding said he was all. retiring. Like he had one. I, I think one he did, more. but I think it was like an, an emotional retirement. So I don't think anyone's really taken it that seriously le- yet. So he uh, he was supposed to fight uh, Imamov, uh, um, but he had to withdraw. So 
Yurkus went in, but then Gastrum had to withdraw, and that fight was canceled. And then uh, he's rescheduled again at um, the 217, but he got a mouth injury, and he's replaced with Sean Strickland in a light heavyweight belt. Okay. Mm. Okay. Okay. Just All to right. get your... All right, so let's keep on track right here before we get to the the good portion of this, the MMA chit-chat portion. So with the two young guns getting their asses handed to them, best way I could put it, politely, Yanez, big jump up in competition. He fighting a killer. <laughs> we understand what happened there. He got in a firefight. He got sparked. He got lit. He went away. We get that one. But Rosas, he shot his load. And you only mm-hmm. nineteen, man. You nineteen, and you got, you got the young man energy still. You got young man reactions. You got all the young man stuff. I don't know what happened to him. He takes oh. a lot of energy to carry that chin. Overhype. <laughs> oh Jesus Christ, man. Oh, hold uh, up, hold hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. Mark, Mark coming with a fucking. Hold up, hold up, hold up. Wait, 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 wait. Let's get this going. <laughs> what you doing? Oh, wait, Mark got the whiskey in him. Mark got the Conor McGregor in him. All right, so listen. Whis- <laughs> listen. All right. Whis- listen, though. He's a young man. He should not be winded How? by the end of the first round like that. Like, he, he was so gassed so quickly. And that's very worrisome. Like, I'm... He, I've grappled. I know how exhausting it can be. Yes. But you are 18 years old. You should not be gassing out like that. This is what you do, right? <laughs> well, uh, this is I, this is uh, there's a here's why. Uh, Rosas was absolutely sprinting the first yes. five, first three minutes of that fight. Like he went off gas pedal full to the floor. Trying to get that first takedown, and then when he got it, he went full sprint to try to finish. Like he was trying to make this a microwave fight. He tried to channel his inner John Jones and get a quick first round, one minute squeeze, and then I, I, I think he's some, to, he, and then he, he, he saw Tom's out do it once, and well, he was like, "I can do it." Well, the guy, the guy sprinted full speed in that first couple minutes. I don't care if you're 19, 15, 50. If you step on the gas that hard that for that long, you will gas. I don't care what kind of tank you think you have. You There there has to be some energy management going on in that. I think I don't think too much of it as far as like it's a, it'll be a problem going forward for him. He's just young. And that's one thing you learn with inexperience is you get – those moments where you think you're invincible, the world shows you you're not, and then you learn from it. So I think he, I think he's smart enough to learn from it, and he'll be fine going forward. Um, but he went absolutely insane that first two minutes. Like he tried to end that fight quickly. I I think I I am gonna reserve judgment, and he might get better. I don't. I think he needs to stick with. Crushing cans for a little bit, get that experience. You know what I mean? Because if he if he goes against, because that that division is full of killers, like chock full of from fifteen all the way up, and even unranked guys in there John, are. John, yeah, that amazing. was a can though. He was yeah. a can. <laughs> that, that was a can. No, the guy he fought wasn't a can. The guy he fought no. was um. I mean, he, it wasn't. It wasn't like he was. A, it was a guarantee win. He's some kind of minus eight hundred favorite versus they're, this guy. They're, they're both it contenders, wasn't, but I mean, right? Cans they're both are, the, guys that ain't ranked though. I right. I do think um, Christian went easy on him. Like, no, he, absolutely he, not. Like, like, like he he nah. he could have. I think he could have ended that fight. I think he could have really put the hurt on him, but I think he just like kind of coasted. No, I mean, I don't think so. Watching that fight, uh, it didn't seem like he was coasted. In fact, I think he he abandoned abandoned going for rear naked chokes when he had his back a bunch just to punch him. 
Like he didn't he didn't go mm-hmm. for the he he didn't commit to fully going for a full nick for for a rear naked choke. He would just put one arm across the shoulder and punish him with the free hand. And he he did that repeatedly um for for the rounds two and three. I I think he was just trying to like basically embarrass him by like pounding on him the whole fight. And he did oh. that. Oh, I I forgot uh one one of one of fight I really enjoyed as well. The uh, the mere cat versus Pfeiffer. I really in prelims. In, that in, was in, early prelims, right? In, uh, uh, yeah, but the in, in, in that in that Roses fight, though, I think I think Roses may have underestimated his opponent a little bit and tried to go for a quick finish and it just failed him. And that's kind of what you get. Like if you don't. If you full sprint, if you full speed sprint, we've seen this throughout history. Guys that have that quick knockout power are guys who can finish um, with grappling and they can do it in a fat, do it quickly. If you survive that early storm, you're you're so compromised that the other guy just can overwhelm you with uh, doing just do, not doing much, just staying calm and um, sticking to the basics. Because we've seen that a lot in MMA, where guys will come out and they come out absolutely balls to the wall, trying to like get that that quick finish. I think um, our boy um, Roses might have just got a crash course, and um, there's a, there's a consequence to that. Like you, if you do it and you finish and you get all the glory of getting an early finish, and you can talk a little bit of shit, that's the payoff. But the downside is. You got to fight for 10 more minutes and you're completely compromised. That's why guys have a more measured approach. You notice, like, out of all the veterans, no matter what um, weight class, they use the first couple minutes as a testing out period where they pace themselves and they kind of try to figure out their opponents, gather some reads, find some openings, and then go for it. But when you go full speed sprint, Immediately from the gate, when both fighters are like at their top, you're, you're, you're the most. I mean, no one comes to a fight 100%, but you're as close to 100% as you can be in that first minute, in that first round. And if you go forward and you don't get there, this, 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 you, you're going to suffer for those, those last 13 minutes. And I think that's what happened to Rosa. I don't think he was outclassed or he is just not he's not good enough to be there i just think that he shot his load too early i mean in all honesty rosa just needs to rewatch this fight a couple of times and rodriguez gave him the absolute roadmap to fix his problems because every time rodriguez had like a rear naked choke kind of in but it wasn't fully in he abandoned it and that was the problem that Rosa did was he had that figure four on for like a whole round almost. And he had, um, he was trying to squeeze like hell every time he got kind of a grip on it. And he just wore himself out. But you saw that Christian was just chilling. He was calm the whole fight. Uh, he just kind of took what he got and he saved it, conserved his energy. He never overextended himself he never like got desperate for any type of finish or anything like that he just took his time and like i said if he watches that roadmap he'll learn a lot from this fight and i think he'll come out a lot better from yeah. it yeah I, I agree with that there there's one prime example of this happening before with a prospect that should have won a fight and that is Aljamain sterling against Brian Caraway, right? Am Fish right? hooker? Same thing. Man, he had Caraway in a body triangle for the whole first round. Am I right? Remember that shit, Mark, right, Mark? Yeah. Like, pff, that was Aljamain's fight to lose, and did he lose it? <laughs> he lost <laughs> it tremendously. He tried to put all his effort into that first round with the body triangle, going for all these submissions, and... What happened? He was gassed after that. Well, same thing when he fought uh, Peter Young the first time. Mm-hmm. But he got a miracle. Well, if, you, if you don't learn that lesson, that problem is going to keep coming up. Exactly. And if you, if you see, if you uh, to give 
a shout out to Joe Rogan since um I, since John took a you know said something about it um or a, I will say this about Joe Rogan he does he has the best description of what a MMA fight is and it's high level problem solving with dire physical consequences and if you make a mistake like of that magnitude you say you you whiff on a uh, a technique and or you overcommit to something these guys are trained to take advantage of that. So if you you mess around and hold on to a squeeze to a, a guillotine too long and you burn your arms out and now you can barely defend yourself because your arms are gassed, or if you sprint full speed and now your cardio is taxed, you you got to pay the price for it. I mean the the the, re, the reward is you get a spectacular early finish. The downside is like I said, you become compromised, and this happens. A lot to younger fighters. You don't see the savvy vets do this much because they've they've been through that. They've learned that. And most the best way to learn about that is in the gym. Get that out of the way in the gym where you can re refine your technique, learn what you can and can't do. I mean, there's I can count. I have countless times when I'm in a gym and there's some guy that just comes in fresh out of high school, got all the piss and vinegar in their veins, and they just like go crazy in the first few grappling rounds but then by the time they change partners the third time they're fighting for their life they can't breathe and they even no matter how good you are if you don't if you don't have the cardio you you're, you're going to drown I don't care how good you are skillfully all right yeah. so we could go go on from the the young prospects 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 getting schooled oh, is a prospect like a proper biscuit it, it is when you're looking at my point of view and having to do push-ups because your picks are not coming through for you they're prospects. <laughs> hey man i want to give you i want to give you your props though they're, they're no longer every, prospects they're prospects every time every time you lost a bet you did your push-ups immediately good respect for that man respect hey shout out to my homeboy tony down in orlando doing his and sending the videos that's right that's right but now we could get into the the best part about the whole pod the mma chit chat part and now yeah man we'll start off with the whole what what are what what's the what's the ufc called wme what what are they? Well, either uh, way, yeah, it's WME. But. Either way, they bought the WWE, so now we got some crossovers potentially happening. The only thing I think that makes sense: Brock Lesnar versus John Jones. Stop it! Not that. <laughs> yes. Wait. Why, wait. Why not that? No. Not in. Not. Not. Well, I mean, that can happen. That's that's a, a huge possibility, but Brock's going to have to get off that stuff, man. Why? No, no, no. no. We'll no, give him another no, exemption, no. and then he'll get suspended no. for two years again. No, I know man. you all... Why does he have to... Listen. Why must he get off the juice? Why this not is let what... them both be juicy as possible and then send it? This yeah. is why I think it happened. Jones I want to see... No. In Brock. No, no, Juice no, no. as much as possible. I want to oh see God. that. Yes, we let's just do one sanctioned fight where it's just like just this just for this scenario only. Only these them, two, like kind of like kind of like Brock and Overeem. Let them both be saucy as possible. Oh, you he, talking them. about horse meat versus uh? Yes. Whatever. <laughs> yes, horse, I want. Horse, I horse meat, see versus, horse meat versus farm boy. Oh lord, mm. Jesus! I want to see it. I want to see. I want to see John Jones come in with muscles on his face. I, I don't want I don't want a peak. If I hear picogram is pulsing, I want decagrams. I want gallons exactly. of it. I want gallons. gallons. Yes. I want to replace his blood with CPO or EPO. His blood is EPO. Uh, he needs to be on HGH, TRT, D ball, Trin, everything. So everything. what you're asking for is a heart attack. <laughs> Yo, I yes. want this. Was, yo, I want Brock Lesnar to come in there on cocaine, all the steroids. I want him to eat six blue chews. I want him to have. I want him to be jacked to the get. Come in there with. I want. I want. I want him to have muscles on his fucking mustache. I want the hardest 
possible to heavyweight. I, and you know what? Forget the weight classes. Don't don't cap it out at two sixty five. Let them boys come in at three fifty if they want to come in. Oh, yeah, 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 that's, super, that's super heavyweight. So super, one time. I want to see us. Yes, one time, one time only. Let like no weight classes. No, just send it. I mean, full and, send. You know what? While we're at it, if we're doing it, if we're gonna go hard, uh, no time limits. Just buddy, Jesus buddy, Christ. that ain't lasting long. I don't think you need a time limit. That fight is lasting three minutes max. One round and <laughs> one round only. That is a one yes. round fight. That's a th- that fight's lasting three minutes. I'm taking a hard under on five minutes. I mean, I'm slamming the under. That okay. fight, no way can they can either one. Well, I can, Jones can probably last more than five minutes, probably, but no way if they're if they're that juiced that they're gonna go past round one. <laughs> Fair enough. But uh, I, I still I, I I've been arguing this with someone just recently that Brock Lesnar gets shit on, but go pull up his combine for the NFL. He is a oh. freak athlete, just incredible. Like, it, genetically, he, he's like he made, the fact that Brock Lesnar even made. Uh, NFL roster, like he got, all, he walk, I mean, didn't he try out for Minnesota and end up getting on? There? He was on the practice squad. He was on their, he was on the ninety man roster for training camp. I know that. I don't know yeah. if he actually made the fifty three. He, he's in preseason game. games. So if he, did that means he made? He was on a ninety man roster. I don't know if he yeah. made the final fifty three for the season, mm-hmm. but the fact that he was able to do that, coming with NFL is probably the toughest sport to just walk into. You got guys who have been doing it their whole life, who are fresh out of college, who have to just walk on to certain teams to make the 90-man roster and sign that little 40-day contract or whatever it may be. And the fact that he made that, did that, in addition to winning the UFC heavyweight title and competing at a high level in wrestling, in pro wrestling, not um, his college career and his um, accolades there, which were also good. I mean, his him being at the pinnacle of WWE being at the pinnacle of um, UFC by being a UFC heavyweight champion and making an, a, a 90 man roster in the NFL, that speaks to him being highly impressive as an athletic freak. I think he's one of the freak freak of the freaks. Like this dude, no one ever questioned his athleticism. That's never been a doubt. His prowess as a fighter has been in question because he doesn't seem to like to get hit. That right. that's what it seems. It, it seems that way. I don't know if it's true or not because well, one, I, I'm I, not getting, you know, I'm not getting hit. I'm just talking shit. But watching him in his fights against other guys that are like his size, he seems to be adverse to being hit. So he, he, if, he, he, if that's like, true, if that is true, then that's one thing. But if it isn't, I would love to see that matchup. I was kind of curious about him fighting Daniel Cormier. When they had the little shoving mm. match, and in the, in after um, I think it was after Cormier beat who's it? Um, did he beat Gustafson in that fight, or did he knock out Stipe? Which fight did? It was Stipe. When when when, when was Stipe? Because Stipe felt very slighted that they were not going to give him a rematch and just go with the Brock Lesnar fight. Okay, because I was really curious about seeing that matchup of seeing DC and Stipe. It's not Stipe. Excuse me, Stipe. Stop catching straight bullets. Uh, seeing Brock Lesnar and DC go at it, I am very intrigued about seeing Brock Lesnar and John Jones go at it, especially given the fact that we don't have a ton of title contenders at heavyweight. The only two guys that even have a remote shot at really pounding the table and saying they deserve to be a title contender is Curtis Blades, who gets knocked out every single time he reaches the top five, I mean top three, and... He's fighting Sergey, Sergey, and Sir, and, and that's the other guy, Sergey, and that's it. Like they, there's no other guy in on the heavyweight roster that can say, yeah, based off of what I've done, based off of my name, based off my marketability, based off my win streak, I deserve to be a number one contender for the heavyweight title. No one, I see no one, I see no names outside of those two. I got so, two names. I, 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 I want to say, oh. wait, 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 Mo, wait, 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 Mo, what, what two names? I, I got two names for, well, you already said one of them. 
but I got another one. But they probably yeah. have to win against somebody. Who's that? Aspinall. John took the words right out of my mouth. I would, you know, what, you know, you know, what would be a good That's fight for right. Aspinall to come back. You know, you know, what would be a good comeback fight for Aspinall to to actually take that claim as being, you know, ready Cereal? for a, a fight. Cereal. Who's that? Serial. Cyril Cyril Gunn would be that would be excellent. That would be an excellent matchup. I was gonna say Bam Bam to Ivasa. Uh that would be fun. That'd be a fun fight to watch. Bam Bam's okay. never in a boring fight. Um never. but if you want to go like pure matchup wise, I think matchup wise, if you want to get two very athletic, very um entertaining, fast type heavyweights, no doubt in my mind, you would book Cyril Gunn versus Tom Aspinall. But then, you know, Tom Tom's coming off a major Surgery. I mean, he he got that that freak injury against Curtis Blades, and we don't know how he's going to look coming back from that. That's why I'm not sure I will put him against who is um the number two guy now in Gone. Is Gone number two or one? Stipe is number two. Stipe is number one. Two. Who, who's who's one? Gone. Gone. So Gone's number one. So I, I, that's, that'd be a pretty big leap to go from. Aspinall fighting Curtis Blades and getting injured to jumping all the way up and getting going against Gon. However, if he does make that jump and um, faces Cyril Gon and wins impressively, yeah, you can you can go ahead and punch that ticket to the title fight. That fight's probably that that whole ranking with everything is probably going to change by the time Tom Aspinall's back in general because you know yeah. Stipe is going to fight John Jones. Given and- whatever happens there, if John Jones wins. Stipe's probably out of the rankings. He's probably going to retire. Or be one of those... Nah, he's probably going to retire. He's he's at that point. Yeah. Well, and then you got cause... Pavlich and uh, Blades fighting. That's probably going to actually... Whoever wins that fight is probably going to leapfrog. All these all these rankings are going to change. Just put it that way. Yeah. I don't know where the shuffle is going to end up at. But I know Gon's not going to be number one no more. Stipe might just get elevated just because. I don't know. You never know. He might stay at number two, and then Blades or Pavlich might move up to number one just to have that number one spot because you know Miocic and Jones is fighting on International Fight Week. You know that's going to be the headliner. So I I think think the the um, Pavlich-Blades is going to be a number one contender. Like, they're going to be next. We know that's um, going to happen. Mm-hmm. Especially because, like, Sergey was the backup fighter, and there is a, uh, like, quite a few of these backup fighters end up fighting for number one contender, or they get the title shot. So, um, who, who do you guys have in the Blades versus Sergey fight? Mm, that's, that's a good one. I, I'm, I, I'm, I'm very, I'm, I'm, I'm definitely very, very interested in that matchup. Um, Curtis seems to struggle with power punchers, um, given that his three losses are to Ngannou twice and once to Derek Lewis. So he seems to have an issue with going against powerful, like really powerful, powerfully punching heavyweights. It's kind of weird to say that, given that most heavyweights are um, very powerful. But guys who have uh, are known for their knockout prowess seem to have Curtis's number. Well, but he does really well against the technical guys. He does good, he does well against the other big technical technical like heavy gone. guys. What's that? Like gone. Well, I think any heavyweight that's if any time Curtis is going against another heavyweight that was known to be a technical striker, he's been able to take him down and um basically have his way with him. And even in the stand up, his stand up isn't bad. It's Pretty, it's I would say it's a, a slightly above average as far as a heavyweight stand up fighter is concerned. It's not bad, but he definitely has some holes when it comes to boxing because he tends to get knocked out, especially in transition. It, it seems like he he's either committed fully to standing up or fully to re- grappling. He's not really mixing it well, and I think if he can figure that part out, he definitely gives not only. Sergey uh, a a bad match. He I think he gives John Jones a bad matchup if he can get that part figured out. That's a big leap though, and we will yeah. see we'll see we'll see whether or not he solved any of that in this fight. Because 
You talk about freaks. Sergey is a freak. That man well, is fast. He's athletic. He's powerful. He's excellent. He's got excellent grappling. This is going to be a good fight to watch. I mean, I don't, I don't know um, who I would lean to if as far as saying the edge goes to. If I was if um gun to my head, I had to pick one. I would say the edge goes to Sergey. Like he yep. seems to be the more athletic, the more fresh guy, the more sharp guy. He seems fast, and we'll see come when, when that fight happens how that all plays out. But if Curtis does solve those problems and he can get a, a impressive win, he definitely gets the title shot. And if he does, like I said, solve all those holes of. His, his issues with in transition and his ability to um, put it all together, then he might be a really, really good uh, challenge for John Jones, right. who doesn't have that problem. John does not have a problem with transitioning or doing any of that stuff. He probably has the highest fight IQ in the game when it comes to putting all the skills together in mixed martial arts as a whole. But, but um, here's the, the, so uh, if, that... if, if he can, if Curtis can do that, that would be intriguing. However, I just don't see it um, happening that fast. I mean, we'll, we'll, I guess we'll see, but I just edge wise, I guess I would lean towards Sergey. I I agree. They measured Sergey's punch power, and it's like second to uh, Nganu. So you got a guy that can do that, but also can grapple and his speed, like everything you were saying. Like he is. The complete package, uh, and sure looks to be sure. Like, like and, and everything we've seen so far, he sure he damn sure looks to be. And I, like the fact that he was willing to go like be a back fighter and cut weight and everything, like it it's a, it it speaks to a certain hunger, you know. So I I think he, I think he really wants it, and I think he, uh, I think he's gonna get it done. Hey, All, although I don't. We we all know how great John Jones is, but I gotta keep reminding myself, like that was such a short fight. How does he deal at heavyweight for prolonged periods of time? Like how's his gas tank? How does he how does he move against another guy? Because you know he was real honed in for gone, and he was able to execute it beautifully. But there's still questions there. But I, I don't want to sound like I'm doubting John because he's a goat, and I don't see anyone beating him. But that's what you say about everyone until they get beaten. Hey, but I got one question though. What's up? This Pavlich dude, Jesus Christ! Like I just looked at his little resume with the UFC. Yeah, he got sparked by a uh, Overeem. Back in 2018. But we talking about now. This dude mm. is on a... If I have I'm a, streak. I'm going to destroy you in the first round. I'm going to put you away in the first round type of stuff. Jesus. I didn't realize yeah. that. I knew he was good, but dude. He ain't yeah, playing. He looks, like, he looks to be the real deal. This dude's on a mission. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. Either you beat him in the first round, or he's beating you in the first round. Well, here, so. Here's wow. Here's here's some here's something that I will say about um. This is to what John was saying earlier. Here's something that I'm looking forward to seeing with John. Historically speaking, with John Jones, he's been so good at every area that he tends to beat guys at their own game. So if he if you're a grappler, he tends to go um to try to out grapple you. And if you're a striker, he tends to make it a stand-up fight and try to outstrike you. And then even when he goes against guys who are a little bit more balanced, he just tends to show you that I'm better at every aspect. I want to see if he's going to be more exploitative in the future and go after guys' weaknesses like he did with the Cyril Gon um, fight. He, he, he was more exploitative in the sense that he went straight for grappling with Cyril and never was trying to make it a kickboxing fight. And that wasn't shades of old John. Old John would have made it a kickboxing match. Mm -hmm. This new incarnation of John Jones that we have now seems to be more exploitative. And so if that's the case, and with a guy with that kind of fight IQ, I'm curious to see what holes does he see in these other guys' games. Like you said, Sergey got knocked out by 
um, L, um, by Overeem, which is not look. Overeem's a world champion kickboxer. That's what? not saying much. He, was that getting knocked, Uberim, getting knocked, getting knocked out by? No, Uberim, that wasn't an Overeem. Getting knocked out by Alexander. Getting, so getting knocked out by Overeem isn't like a, isn't a slight in the, in the least. He can knock out anybody. If you remember, he had Stipe on the floor before Stipe recovered and got, got the finish. So Overeem is, and he we also TKO'd. Oop, um, Brock Lesnar on all the sauce, so it's not like over him some some scrub. He's one of the best to do it. He's like a Hall of Fame type talent. Um, I really would like to see what version of John Jones we get going forward. Are we gonna get the the Jones of yesteryear, the phenom who was like, all right, I'm gonna beat you at your own game, or are we gonna get what we see out of most martial artists, especially most mixed martial artists? especially most great mixed martial artists, they find what you're not good at and show it to the world. GSP did a great job of it through his career. Mm-hmm. And we will see if Jones goes more with that, um, I guess, path to carving out his late heavyweight legacy. There's well, one thing that one thing that guys give Jones a lot of sh- uh, shade for outside of the off the field stuff or out of the cage stuff outside of the quote unquote boring fights that he's been in. They give him a lot of shade. Well, I'm sorry. No, I actually, that's what I meant. He, they give him a lot of shade for being in quote unquote boring fights where um, you got fights like the OSP fight where it was pretty uneventful and you, you think that, all right, well, is, has he fallen off or is he bored in there? And I think it's a combination of him being not threatened by these guys at 205, like Reyes and Gustafs in the first fight, and taking it like a little bit easier, like lighter as far as his um, training. Whereas at heavyweight, I think that fear is there again, where you mm-hmm. go, you have to be worried about the guys you're fighting. You you can't take a shortcut. You can't go out partying the night before and then show up and then just win because you're athletically better than everybody else. You have to be prepared because everybody at heavyweight can shut the lights out at the top. Well, he with, he with, had a, uh, an interview. Oh, I'm sorry. The screen is lagging with your voice. Um, he had an interview where he said you have to get comfortable with the worst possible outcome. And he's talking about the Ngannou fight. And he's like, he knocks me out. Okay. So that's the worst thing that can happen. You know, how, how he incorporates that into his mindset if that's the worst thing that can happen to me okay how do i keep that from happening and figure out the game plan i mean all the heavyweights can can turn your lights out so uh, especially at the time yeah especially the these up-and-comer guys because well look look at let's let's, let's go go through the go through the list of names look at the list of names that he would potentially face look at a guy like um bam bam tui vasa Derek lewis um, Stipe can turn your lights out. Obviously, um, Cyril Gan has the ability to, but he, I mean, he hasn't showcased it much uh, outside of a couple fights. And then Tom Aspinall, you got Sergey Pavlich, you got um, um, who else would you say at heavyweight is a especially in the top ten? Who was for sure a guy that they got one strike knockout power? And let's not even rule out because we saw um, Francis test the free agent market. We saw him test like uh, his ability to get paid from other organizations. PFL recently said he demanded too much, and they didn't sign them. So is they could uh, be a potential. Knuckle? They they could be a potential. Bare knuckle also said they wouldn't pay him. Well, there you go. So like he tested the free agent market and saw the free agent market showed him his value, and he still thinks that it's, that it's more. Is is there a shot that he goes for a boxing match? The only guys that are available. There's only one guy available that makes any sense, and that's Deontay Wilder, because Anthony Joshua, he's fighting. He's he's already got a fight um, in the works, and and well, Usyk, Tyson. Usyk, Tyson Fury and Usyk are got a fight in the works. So there's and, no in the near future. The only matchup is Wilder in the, in the, in the near future. That, um, July uh, on April Fool's Day, Tyson put up the fight. Uh, of him and, and Ganu. So it's it, it, it's a joke to him. It's not something they're actually going to do. So, yeah, it's, it's Deontay Wilder, but even that is like, no guarantee of getting paid and that happening. 
Oh, it, yeah. I, I think that fight that fight will could definitely stir up enough intrigue to get uh, a big well, no, Hundred percent. It, 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 my thing is it, it, that fight actually materializing. I'm sure it's no, it will I, do a payday, but I don't know if it will um, come up. You know what I mean? Well, um, I know I know Mosey. I, know, I see I see the blue car, my brother. But I, I I know that Wilder's interested. He 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 made he made it known publicly with tweets that he's interested in making that fight happen. It's all up to how much, because when it comes to negotiation, I think that whoever is in Ngannou's camp is not doing a really good job, because it, 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 some of these fights that could have easily materialized haven't because of numbers. And well, I mean, because we, we could have gotten Jones versus Ngannou earlier, right? In the I, UFC, if I can, uh, one point is so like these big, big like. Big, big, big fights where you have these guys getting paid a lot of money. Um, sometimes the promoters don't even make money, uh, or they lose money. Like the apparently the McGregor Mayweather, um, like some of the the guys, like the promoters, actually lost some of the money because they had so many guarantees to McGregor and Floyd. So there's different. Oh, hold on. When, when you say the promoters lost money. Mayweather has his own promotion. I'm, I'm, I know he didn't lose money. Did are you saying that the UFC lost money with McGregor? Uh so I, I remember was, someone was talking about it on Errol Hawani. I, I just saw this like uh, maybe a month ago, and they were talking about they like this Floyd and Connor wanted to run it back, but some of the investors in that maybe it's not the pro like people that had put money in did not. Get a, a good enough return on investment mm. because of the guarantees. Well, you know what, you know what, this that that statement makes sense then because if, if 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 there was money lost, it was probably the UFC, and if that's that will make sense to why UFC has no interest in doing Francis versus um, Tyson Fury and having a part in that or any if, if other they, boxing. You know, well, if they, if they lost money on the McGregor one, then they probably would. I mean, they, would they would still lose money again mm-hmm. in, in in promoting um, and doing a doing a cross promotion and doing a say a Tyson Fury versus um, Francis and Gano with UFC having their hand in it, right? And that was with McGregor and Floyd, the two biggest guys ever. And if you lost money on that, Francis and Gano did not draw money at all uh yes. like so but yeah I, I agree i agree with that that, that's, that's, that makes more sense then because I, I was i was wondering like why wouldn't ufc be interested in doing a one-off like cross a, a one-off cross promotion when they already have they already set the precedent they already did it they did it with mcgregor and floyd why not do it with nganu and um, even if it was Anthony Joshua, if it was Tyson Fury, if it was Deontay Wilder, it doesn't really matter. It doesn't change anything for Francis's legacy and career as it pertains to the UFC. It doesn't right. change anything. It's just another um, fight that you can book and then make money off of. And they're interested in making money, but it doesn't make sense if they didn't make any money. If they lost yeah. money, then that makes a lot of sense why they're like, no, it's not. we're not... Promoting this fight and doing all this to make less money when we can just keep you on the roster, have you fight the fights in UFC and make all the money. It, I, I, so it's crazy because like Jose Aldo and a bunch of guys have come out and said they they think Francis like kind of shot himself in the foot. He did. With, and I mean, I, yeah, like he he, he could have been the highest paid heavyweight of all time. <laughs> I think it would have been like something like eight or nine million dollars guaranteed for the the Jones fight. All right, guys. I don't think it was that much other than pay per view points. We're pushing uh, almost two hours, and I know how this goes. So, we're going to cut it off here, and we'll. Look to do another pod this week because we have a uh, we, we got a, a lot to card. talk about. We got we got a lot to talk about because the MMA chit chat is whoa wow. 
I'll talk to you guys about this later. But on that note, we got the thing we got to do. We got to zip it up. And zip it out. Zippity doo dah. Bye bye. Hold on. Wait, 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 wait. Check this out. <laughs> oh, that's funny. We, we do have the uh, the amazing well, well, holiday we, card coming up. We 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 calling it. We ca- oh yeah, we definitely talking about Thursday. Yes, Thursday. That's all I gotta say. But uh, on this note, zip it up and zip it out. Bye bye. Peace, boys. <laughs>